सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंस मोमेंट्स एन इंग्लिश ऑडियो टेक्स्ट बुक फॉर क्लास नाइन्थ नेरेटेड बाय निवेदिता सरदार नाउ लेट एस लिसन टू लेसन नंबर नाइन द एक्सीडेंटल टूरिस्ट फ्रॉम पेज नंबर फिफ्टी सिक्स टू सिक्सटी वन द ऑथर इज बिल ब्राइसन इंट्रोडक्शन दे से that the world today is a small place because travel has become easy but not everybody finds it easy to travel here the author reflects humorously his experiences as a traveler let us listen to the accidental tourist of all the things i am not very good at living in the real world is perhaps the most outstanding i'm constantly filled with wonder at the number of things that other people do without any evident difficulty that are pretty much beyond me i cannot tell you the number of times that i have gone looking for the lavatory in a cinema for instance and ended up standing in an alley on the wrong side of a self locking door my particular speciality now is returning to hotel desks two or three times a day and asking what my room number is i am in short easily confused i was thinking about this the last time we went and family on a big trip it was at easter and we were flying to england for a week when we arrived at logan airport in boston and were checking in i suddenly remembered that i had recently joined british airways's frequent flyer program i also remembered that i had put the card in the carry on bag that was hanging around my neck and here's where the trouble started the zip on the bag was jammed so i pulled on it and yanked at it with grunts and frowns and increasing consternation i kept this up for some minutes but it won't budge so i pulled harder and harder with more grunts well you can guess what happened abruptly the zip gave way the side of the bag flew open and everything within newspaper cuttings and other loose papers a 14 ounce tin of pipe tobacco magazines passport english money film was extravagantly ejected over an area about the size of a tennis court i watched dumbstruck as a hundred carefully sorted documents came running down in a fluttery cascade coins bounced to a variety of noisy oblivions and the now lidless tin of tobacco rolled crazily across the concourse disgorging its content as it went my tobacco i cried in horror thinking what i would have to pay for that much tobacco in england now that another budget had come and gone and then changed the cry to my finger my finger as i discovered that i had gashed my finger on the zip and was shedding blood in a lavish manner i'm not very good around flowing blood generally but when it's my own well i think hysterics are fully justified confused and unable to help my hair went into panic mode it was at this point that my wife looked at me with an expression of wonder not anger 
or exasperation, but just simple wonder, and said, I can't believe you do this for a living. But I'm afraid it's so. I always have catastrophes when I travel. Once on an aeroplane, I leaned over to tie a shoelace. Just at the moment, someone in the seat ahead of me threw his seat back into full recline and found myself pinned helplessly in the crash position. It was only by clawing the leg of the man sitting next to me that I managed to get myself freed. On another occasion, I knocked a soft drink onto the lap of a sweet little lady sitting beside me. The flight attendant came and cleaned her up and brought me a replacement drink and instantly I knocked it onto the woman again. To this day, I don't know how I did it. I just remember reaching out for the new drink and watching helplessly as my arm, like some cheap prop in one of those 1950s horror movies with a name like The Undead Limb, violently swept the drink from its perch and onto her lap. The lady looked at me with the stupefied expression you would expect to receive from someone whom you have repeatedly drenched and uttered an oath that started with oh finished with sake and in between had some words that i have never heard uttered in public before certainly not by a nun this however was not my worst experience on a plane flight my worst experience was when I was writing important thoughts in a notebook. Buy socks, clutch rings carefully, etc. Sucking thoughtfully on the end of my pen as you do and fell into conversation with an attractive young lady in the next seat. I amused her for perhaps 20 minutes with the scattering of urbane bond smarts then retired to the lavatory where I discovered that the pen had leaked and that my mouth, chin, tongue, teeth and gums were now a striking, scrub-resistant navy blue and would remain so for several days. So you will understand, I trust, when I tell you how much I ache to be soft. I would love, just once in my life, to rise from a dinner table without looking as if I have just experienced an extremely localized seismic event, get in a car and close the door without leaving 14 inches of coat outside, wear light-colored trousers without discovering at the end of the day that I have at various times sat on chewing gum, ice cream, cough syrup and motor oil. But... It is not to be. Now on the planes, when the food is delivered, my wife says, Take the lids off the food for daddy. Or, put your hoods up, children. Daddy is about to cut his meat. Of course, this is only when I am flying with my family. When I am on my own, I don't eat, drink or lean over to tie my shoelaces and never put a pen anywhere near my mouth. I just sit very, very quietly, sometimes on my hands, to keep them from flying out unexpectedly and causing liquid mischief. It's not much fun, but it does at least cut down on the laundry bills. I never did get my frequent flyer miles, by the way. I never do. I couldn't find the card in time. This has become a real frustration for me. Everyone I know, everyone, 
is forever flying off to Bali first class with their air miles. I never get to collect anything. I must fly 100,000 miles a year. Yet, I have accumulated only about 212 air miles divided between 23 airlines. This is because either I forget to ask for the air miles when I check in or I remember to ask for them but the airline then manages not to record them or the check-in clerk informs me that I am not entitled to them. In January, on a flight to Australia, a flight for which I was going to get about a zillion air miles, the clerk shook her head when I presented my card and told me I was not entitled to any. Why? The ticket is in the name of B. Bryson and the card is in the name of W. Bryson. I explained to her the close and venerable relationship between Bill and William, but she wouldn't have it. So, I didn't get my air miles and I won't be flying to Bali first class just yet. Perhaps just as well, really. I could never go that long without eating. Glossary Alley A narrow passageway between or behind buildings. Yanked Pulled with a jerk. Concourse The open central area in a large public building. Here in the airport. Disgorging Discharging Exasperation Irritation Suave Sophisticated Polite Seismic event Usually an earthquake Think about it. 1. Bill Bryson says I am, in short, easily confused. What examples has he given to justify this? 2. What happens when the zip on his carry-on bag gives way? 3. Why is his finger bleeding? What is his wife's reaction? 4. How does Bill Bryson end up in a crash position in the aircraft? 5. Why are his teeth and gums navy blue? 6. Bill Bryson ached to be served. Is he successful in his mission? List his unsolved ways. 7. Why do you think Bill Bryson's wife says to the children, Take the lids off the food for daddy. 8. What is the significance of the title? Talk about it. To get confused and behave in unsuave ways like Bill Bryson is normal and human. Tell your class about any similar situation that you found yourself in. Suggested reading Three Men in a Boat by Jerome K. Jerome Three Men on a Burnell by Jerome K. Jerome Riding the Ranges by Bill Aitken Moments. You were just listening to this English audio textbook for class 9th, narrated by Nivedita Sardar. Technical direction, Satish Lade. Sound recording, Amita Bhatti and Bati Langlingdo. Assistance in production, Dao Dayal Chaturvedi. Produced and presented by Ramesh Rani Sharma.